Good day everyone. Welcome to Learn with MN. In this video, we will discuss all path operations in Inkscape. You can find all these operations here in the path menu. Let's discuss each one by one in detail. First is Union, and its shortcut key is Control Plus. Union merges the selected paths into a single unified shape, like this. You can merge more than two shapes simultaneously, like these three circles. As you can see, when we apply Union, it removes any overlapping parts of the selected shapes, combines them into one, and applies a single stroke to the new shape, like in these examples. If the shapes are not overlapping, Union will combine them into a compound path, like this. And if a shape is inside another shape, then applying union will merge them into one shape, removing the inner path, like this. Next is difference, and its shortcut key is control dash. Difference works on two paths at a time. It subtracts the top path from the bottom path, like this. Similarly, here, the yellow path is on top, so it will subtract itself from the bottom shape, like this. If the top path is inside the bottom path, applying difference will create a hole in the bottom path, like this. Next is intersection, and its shortcut key is control star. Intersection keeps only the overlapping areas of the selected paths and deletes the rest, like this. In other words, it leaves the common areas shared by all selected paths. For example, in this case, this area is common among all three paths, so applying intersection will result in just this area, like this. Like union, intersection can be applied to more than two paths at a time. If the selected paths do not overlap, then applying intersection will delete both paths, resulting in nothing. If a path is inside another path, the intersection will keep the inner path since it is common to the selection, like this. Next is exclusion, and its shortcut key is Control shift 6 Exclusion works similarly to the exclusive or function, the difference is that it works on shapes or paths based on overlapping areas. For example, if we have these overlapping paths and apply exclusion, the result will look like this. At first glance, it might seem like exclusion deletes the overlapping areas and keeps the non-overlapping ones, but that's not exactly the case. Let's clarify this with an example. Here, I've labeled areas based on how many paths overlap. Areas with no overlap are labeled 1. Areas where two paths overlap are labeled 2, and areas with three paths overlapping are labeled 3. In this way, we have arranged six circles and labeled each area. Now, when we apply exclusion to all six circles, the result will be like this. If you observe the result, you can see the areas labeled 1, 3, and 5 are visible, while the areas labeled 2, 4, and 6 are removed. In other words, exclusion keeps areas where the number of overlapping paths is odd, and removes areas where the overlaps are even. Next is Combine, and its shortcut key is Control k Combine merges selected paths into a single object but keeps their individual shapes and boundaries intact, like this. At first, it might look similar to Union, but there's a key difference. Union merges paths into one single shape, removing any overlaps and creating a continuous outline. Combine, however, does not remove overlaps or create a new outline. The paths stay separate but are grouped together as one object. For example, if we have separate paths like these and apply Combine, they get grouped into one object, like this. If the shapes are not overlapping and we use combine, it converts them into a compound path, like this. Now, if one shape is inside another, and we apply combine, the result looks like this. As you can see, the paths are merged into a single object, but the inside shape still keeps its boundaries and remains visible. Next is break apart, and its shortcut key is control shift k. Break apart is the opposite of combine. It splits a compound path into separate individual paths. For example, if we have overlapping shapes that are part of a compound path, applying break apart will separate them into individual pieces, like this. Similarly, if we have a set of lines combined into a compound path, using break apart will split them into separate paths, like this. 
If we apply break apart on a compound path with non-overlapping shapes, it will separate all the shapes into their own independent paths, like this. Now, if we have a path with a hole, like this square with a smaller circle inside, and apply break apart, both shapes will split into separate paths. As you can see, the inside shape no longer acts as a whole but becomes its own independent object. Next is split path, and its shortcut key is Control alt shift k Split path breaks non-overlapping paths into separate pieces, like this. Unlike break apart, split path does not affect overlapping paths. For example, in this compound path, we have two overlapping shapes and one non-overlapping shape. Applying a split path will separate the non-overlapping part while keeping the overlapping paths grouped together. To further separate the overlapping paths, you would need to use break apart. In this example, if we apply break apart to a square with a hole, it splits both the square and the hole into separate shapes. But applying split path has no effect because they overlap. However, if we arrange copies of squares with holes into a compound path in a non-overlapping structure, then applying split path will break each square with a hole into independent shapes, like this. For text, split path is very useful when you want to break text into individual letters, while keeping their original shapes intact, like this. With break apart, the letters also separate, but the holes inside letters will fill in, which changes their appearance. Next is division, and its shortcut key is control slash. Division is used to cut closed paths into separate closed shapes using the top path. For example, if we have a shape like this and use a line as the top path, division will cut the bottom shape into separate pieces where the line intersects, like this. Division works on two paths at a time. You can also use different shapes or paths other than straight lines to cut the shape, like this. If you want to cut a shape from multiple places at once, combine the cutting paths first, and then apply division. This will slice the shape from multiple places, like this. If a shape is inside another shape like this circle, then applying division will cut out the circle from the square, like this. Next is cut path, and its shortcut key is control alt slash. Cut path is similar to division but has one key difference. Division cuts closed shapes into closed pieces, while cut path cuts shapes or strokes into open paths using the top path. In simple terms, cut path slices the stroke of the shape. For example, if we have a closed shape and a line on top, then applying cut path will cut the stroke where the line intersects, turning the closed shape into an open path with no fill, like this. If you want to cut a shape's stroke from multiple places, first combine the cutting paths, and then apply cut path. This will slice the stroke from all those points at once. Similarly, if you want to cut the stroke of multiple shapes using a single path, combine the shapes first and then apply the cut path. Both shape strokes will be cut where the line path was placed, like this. Next is fracture, and its shortcut is Shift-Alt-F. It is also used to cut closed paths into closed paths. Fracture breaks apart all the overlapping parts into their own shapes, like this. You may be wondering about the difference between division and fracture when cutting an object. Division and fracture may give the same result in some situations, but they are different in behavior. Let's start with this simple example. As we explained in our previous video, when you select both objects and apply division on them, it will cut the shape from where the line was passing, like this. But, if we apply fracture on the same objects, then it will also cut the object in the same manner, like this. Then what is the difference? This example will make the difference clear. If we want to cut this circle using this square, and apply division, then the circle will be cut where the square was placed, but it will remove the square part that was outside the circle. On the other hand, if we apply fracture on the same objects, then it will keep the square part as well, and return three shapes, like this. That's the main difference between division and fracture. In simple words, fracture is just like bone fracture, but none of its pieces are gone anywhere. Another difference is in cutting an object with multiple paths or shapes. For example, if we want to cut this shape with these two paths and one ellipse, then we have to combine them first before applying division.
After the combine operation, applying division will cut this shape into five parts, like this. On the other hand, you don't need to apply a combine operation while using fracture. Fracture will cut your shape despite as many shapes or paths you use to cut an object. It will create all shapes to separate parts from where the edge is crossing. For more understanding, we recommend watching our video with different examples of cutting any shape using the division method. Use these examples to understand more about division and fracture. Next is flatten, and its shortcut key is Shift F. Sometimes, we don't need the overlapping areas of shapes, especially when creating logos or CNC cutting files. Flatten removes those overlaps. When we apply flatten, it may look like nothing has changed at first, but when we move the shapes apart, you can see that all the overlapping parts have been removed. For example, here, these shapes have overlapping areas. After applying flatten, those overlaps are removed, leaving only the visible parts of the shapes intact. The next four operations are related to offsets, which allow you to expand or contract a path outward or inward. Inset scales the selected path inward uniformly from every point. Its shortcut key is Control Open Parenthesis. Let's duplicate these shapes to observe the effect. If I apply inset to this polygon, you can see it moves inwards uniformly every time I apply it, like this. By default, inset reduces the path by two pixels at a time. Similarly, outset scales the selected path outward uniformly from every point. Its shortcut key is control close parenthesis. For example, if I apply outset to the star, you can see it expand outwards uniformly every time I apply it, like this. By default, outset increases the path by two pixels at a time. You can adjust this value in the preferences. Next is dynamic offset, which allows you to scale the shape both inward and outward with more flexibility. Unlike inset or outset, it gives you manual control over the offset adjustment. Let's duplicate this shape to see how it works. After applying dynamic offset, switch to the node tool, and you'll see a diamond-shaped handle appear. By moving this node, you can freely adjust the offset inward or outward with greater precision, like this. The last operation is linked offset, which is similar to dynamic offset but with an additional advantage. When you apply linked offset, it preserves the original shape. It creates a copy of the original path with a dynamic offset handle. The key difference is that the original shape remains untouched and is linked to the new offset path. This means any changes you make to the original shape will automatically update the linked offset, while keeping the offset intact, like this. This is especially useful for designs where you need to adjust the original shape later. That was all for this video. If you have any queries, feel free to write in the comments section or contact us on our website, its link is in the description. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, so you don't miss any updates. Thank you for watching.